Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the East Baton Rouge Parish Library's Mid-City Microcon. Although this is our third year doing the Mid-City Microcon, this is our very first 100% virtual con. The Mid-City Microcon is a celebration of diversity in comic book characters, creators, and their fans. This event provides a free, inclusive opportunity for new and lifelong fans to find themselves in the world of comics and art, both on the page and behind the scenes. We strive to amplify the voices of creators who challenge the status quo, especially those who have been historically underrepresented in the comic book industry, and also local creators from Baton Rouge and Louisiana. Unlike many comic book conventions, the Mid-City Microcon does not charge a fee to vendors nor attendees, thereby allowing more freelance, independent, and self-published creators a space to showcase their work. For more information about this year's Microcon, as well as previous years, please visit our website at ebrpl.com slash mcmc. Thank you. I'm going to draw some fun stuff uh, for y'all. Uh, I hope everybody's been enjoying the, uh, the, the stream today. It's been really great. Had some great uh, discussions. Um, but yeah, I'm going to draw. Um, I'm working on uh, just a little fun little project here. Um, I started out with a, a quick little doodle sketch and then um, I made it, you know, uh, not as crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I use, I'm using Photoshop. Um, that's how typically I draw. Um, and with my sketch layer, I'm just gonna make this a little lower. Um, I kind of already started, uh, working a little bit on it. Um, but yeah, um, these are some characters that I have um, been drawing comics of for a few years now, off and on. Um, they are uh, a tiger uh, named Stripes and a little mouse called Plaid. Um, they are pirates uh, in this uh, silly little fantasy world. Um, that I've written up, um, they get into a lot of capers, uh, a lot of a lot of problems. Um, uh, I've I've been uh, trying to get this uh, project going as a children's book um, series, either a children's book series or just a comic, uh, like a graphic novel. Um, and um, the, the, the fun thing with digital art is a lot of times uh, it's kind of going back over uh, and over and over <laughs> to get the right lines. Um, but just like any other kind of um, art, you know, it takes, it takes practice. And that's, um, I used to do um, some uh, cartooning lessons um, uh, a few years ago, and it, it no one never no one ever likes to hear the the answer the, you know the to practice if you want to get good at something um, and it 's especially true with art. I really believe that anybody can draw um, it's it's it 's something that anybody it 's just a skill like anything else anyone can you know learn and figure it out. Um, yeah, that is not how that should work, but yeah, so I'm drawing stripes here and she's, um, uh, I don't know. I kind of, kind of made like a little story in my head for this, for this morning. And, um, since they're like, they're, they're pirates, they, they get into, you know, capers and, they get into trouble and I figured it might be funny if they were uh, maybe looking for buried treasure and they found it, but then they found something else that didn't want them to have the buried treasure. 
Um, let me get rid of that. Tangent. So a lot of times when I'm drawing like this, I'll, I'll come up with like a little story. Um, definitely is true for when I'm doing uh, a comic. Um, but just for like a little illustration like this, um, I kind of think about, you know, composition, how I want it to look, uh, what the little story is that it's being, that's being told, um, and whether or not I can draw a tiger tail, which is right now uh, a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> ah, come on, there we go. Um, I am using uh, the tools I'm using as uh, oh, <clears throat> Wacom uh, bamboo tablet. Um, it's it's not one of the fancy ones with the screen, um, though. That is, you know, I would like to get that one day. Um, but uh, one of the uh, the earlier panel this morning. Um, the, the anime guys, uh, trapped in anime guys, they were talking about how it, it doesn't really matter the tools, that, what kind of tools you have, if you have the best, you can have the best camera, you can have the best, you know, drawing pad, Cintiq. It, it matters what you do with it. And that's great advice. Um, coming up with your own content, your own little story to tell, your own little style, that's what's important. Um, you can always improve, you know, the, the tools you use, but the skills that you pick up along the way, that's what's important. And that's, that's what's gonna make and break you. Um, and uh, my other, uh, suggestion is basically uh, fake it till you make it because <laughs> that is certainly something that I have tried uh, many many times um, doing uh, comics on my, myself um, and for other people um, you know it, it, pe just just kind of know what you're about and go for it if you like to draw ridiculous silly comics um go for that if you you know want to do superheroes um you can be the superhero person um, um but you know at the same time it's good to branch out it's good to try new things it's good to draw huge pinkies that don't actually work um so yeah so this is plaid uh he is uh a very cranky pirate mouse um and he usually gets stripes into all kinds of trouble. Um, they, in my old comic, uh, Kabu Cove, um, where these characters come from, they, uh, they got thrown off their pirate ship by their old sea captain. Um, so now let me, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's never good to make a sea captain mad. Um, one of the advantages of drawing uh, digitally is that, especially with Photoshop and anything else like uh, Clip Studio, um, Procreate, um, pretty much any art um, program is gonna have a layer system and uh, you can draw on different layers and just erase things very quickly and easily without having to worry about uh, going over and, and getting rid of art uh, line art that you, you know, wouldn't have wanted to uh, get rid of earlier. So that is what we're doing right now. I'm going to draw. Um, I like to draw octopus guys for monsters. They're fun. Um, they're scary. Um, Yeah, and I was hoping to try to speed through this a little bit and maybe I can uh, start throwing down some color on this real quick. It's gonna be a little quick sketchy. Um, usually uh, it takes me, oh boy, maybe, it takes me quite a few hours uh, to, to finish uh, a comic. Um, 
for uh, an illustration like this from start to finish. Um, this, uh, this part, the line, line art, the inking, uh, usually uh, takes a lot longer. Um, I'm a little more precise. Um, but for today, I figured it might be a little okay to be a little sketchy. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make this creepy octopus, <laughs> octopus monster. Uh, very mad at them. Um, Ibukov, uh my comic's kind of like a like a fantasy uh, type world, so not everything is. Uh, exactly like it is here. Um, I can draw this pirate chest, this something treasure chest. That is not correct. Um, but yeah, um, for anybody who just likes drawing as a hobby. Anybody who likes drawing as, you know, if you want to get into it professionally, um, really it, it just comes down to just, just starting. Um, whatever kind of idea you have, just go for it. Um, it, um, it, 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 it's one of those things like, especially with web comics, um, anything really like your your first 100 comics will probably be not that great um just because you know that's something you're learning um but the more you do the better that it's going to get like this this is awful uh i gotta erase this <laughs> uh, i want this to be yeah there you go that's a better handle um so, okay, I got most of this. Let's go back to this tail and try this tail again. Um, the important thing with this kind of area in this picture is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of lines going around and I don't want to create any tangents, uh, tangents where it kind of connects to each other. So, yeah. That's close enough. And then I put in another layer. I've got a very little small mountain that I'm going to do back here. And I'm going to put in a horizon. Perfect. So now I'm going to take uh, this hastily drawn. Uh, sketch and I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. Um, once I figure out, <laughs> there you go. It's always very important to name, <laughs> to name your, um, name your layers uh, when you're working digitally because it'll save you a lot of time to try to figure out uh, what, what is what. Um, Uh, cleanup can take a while, uh, depending on how sketchy you are. Um, I see a lot of, um, a lot of times, and I do this myself a lot when I look at other people's artwork, is I'll know how, uh, especially digital, digitally, like how clean their line art is or how sketchy it is. Um, and, and really, it's kind of personal preference, but but just because it's it's sketchier, um, that's that person's style. It doesn't necessarily make it wrong, um, if you know what I mean. Um, it's just it, it all comes down to you know their technique. Um, sometimes sketchy you know really works, but if you want cleaner, uh, a more technical finish to your artwork, you know you, know, you can do that as well. Um, I, uh, I, I typically try to go um, for more uh, cl cleaner line artwork. Um, not all the time. Um, let's 
see, yeah, I have too many layers and I don't remember which one is which. That's another problem. But, um, stripes and plaid are two, I, I started uh, getting into comics when I was really in middle school. Um, I grew up with Calvin and Hobbes um, and Peanuts and, you know, newspaper strips like that, but then also comic books. Um, Spider-Man, the X-Men were two really, really big uh, influences on me uh, growing up. Um, and uh, especially with um, Calvin and Hobbes, uh, you know, it, it was the first comic that really made me want to start to, to draw um, comics, not just, you know, any other kind of little drawing that I would do. Um, so I actually made up stripes and plaid uh, in English class one day because <laughs> uh, I was bored in class, which is something you should not do. You should pay attention to your teachers. Um, <laughs> but I was, I was a little uh, bored one day and I just started making a little comic and uh, they were uh, a rip off of other things I like. Um, and when you're just starting out, uh, having ideas like pulling from things you like isn't, isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, at least just to, to learn, learn what you like, learn, learn how things, you know, work for you and the kind of story you're telling. Um, but I used to draw little comics of them all the time. And uh, I, they just kind of stuck with me throughout the years. And I've, I've re-envisioned them uh, tons and tons and tons and times. Originally, Stripes was actually um, uh, a boy tiger. And uh, I've, whoop, man, that's not good. Uh, fairly recently, I've, I've, I've changed, uh, changed her to be a girl tiger just because I, I, I felt I wanted a little more, um, uh, I needed to mix up uh, the formula a little bit and get some, you know, more representation in there. Um, it's, it, it's interesting, uh, you know, the, the, the way when you, when you're a creator and you come up with different ideas um, and characters, how, how they can change throughout the years. Um, that, that process can be really hard too, because it's sometimes it's like you, you, that's your baby and you don't really you know want to make a change, even though that change may be for the better. Um, it, can, it can be difficult to, to commit to that. Um, um, and I, um, I struggled a little bit um, with the like how do you how do, how do you draw you know a tiger? Uh, to look like, you know, look like a girl. And um, my, my comic, you know, is pretty, I guess, um, if you think in terms of like Zootopia from Disney, it's a very, um, you know, I just use, you know, their outfit or whatever. Um, all right, that's pretty good. I got to fix this. And then I'm going to throw down some color real quick. But yeah, like I said, we're, um, I'm drawing in uh, Photoshop and um, that's just what I like uh, to use. I'm familiar enough with it. Um, I use it in my other work that I do uh, with graphic design. Um, so it's a program I'm familiar with, but that doesn't mean that if you're trying to get into digital art that you have to use it. Um, Clip Studio, um, also, uh, it's also called, I think, Manga Studio, um, is a fantastic program um, for, for drawing. Um, a, a lot of professionals use it. Um, Procreate uh, is another one that's used, I think, primarily on iPad. Um, I don't know if it has, uh, I don't know if it has versions on other uh, smart pads outside of Apple. Um, but it's a really good one as well. So here is my <laughs> quick little 
drawing of these little guys who have gotten in trouble. Um, I need to fix this because there you go. Poor plaid. Poor little plaid. He's always in trouble. Um, so now that all my line art's done, I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, I'm going to set it to multiply. Um, and what this will do is it will actually make the uh, let me throw down some color um, on a new layer, but my my you know black uh, ink lines are uh, not messed up. So I'm going to throw. I think the first thing. What, usually, what I typically do is I'll actually start with the background and kind of work my way up the picture. Um, so for clouds, you know. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, the composition of your um, of your background is just as important. Um, as the foreground, um, you don't want to make it too, too busy. Um, here, I'm going to select um, another one of the nice uh, things about um, Photoshop is that there is a just a ridiculous amount of different tools you can use. Um, here I'm using the lasso tool and um, uh, a certain paintbrush that I have. Um, brushes are um, just a great tool to use. Um, there's a lot of artists out there that will make uh, use of the different tools. Um, they're, they're actually make brushes for you to, to kind of play around with. Um, um, and a lot of them, uh, a lot of them are free. Um, I'm going to make a little soft gradient back here for my Come on. All right. Doesn't want to work. That's always good. <laughs> and color theory is 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 important. Um, it, 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 like everything, it's you know it's it's another something to learn uh, from. Um, so here I have uh, for all my my little guys. These are my. Um, character portraits and I have all of their um, their colors uh, planned out so they can be consistent for everything I do. Um, so like for plaid here I'll just go around and coloring the way I do it is the most uh, time-consuming most tedious process um, but in some ways I think it's the most fun. Um, I, the way I do it is I'll use the lasso tool in Photoshop, um, draw um, around the, whoop, got my channels mixed up, there we go. Um, draw around the shapes and then kind of just fill them out. Uh, when you zoom in like this, um, it, I mean, it really shows like, all your little imperfections. And that for me is a hard thing to get around. Um, Cause if you look at something long enough, especially for some artists, it'll, it's just like you pick everything apart. Um, and if you do that and you self criticize too much, um, you, you can definitely hit a roadblock. I know I do. Um, the, the, one of the scariest things is a blank page. Um, Cause you never know, you know, there's just too many possibilities and you don't want to mess it up. Um, and um, with digital art, it's very easy to fix mistakes. Um, 
but nonetheless, it is very, very nerve wracking sometimes when you're not sure what you're going to draw. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is just do it. Just start. Go outside the lines if you want. It's okay. <laughs> So this this poor mouse, this poor poor mouse. Um, I've always put uh, these characters in wacky situations, and it's it's usually it's usually plaid that gets the most in trouble. Um, He's definitely kind of a wild child. Um, definitely, probably part of part of me is written in him uh, when I was younger and was a very rambunctious child. Well, that is not the right color. That is terrifying. So yeah, seeing there, there's the the fun the the interesting thing about Photoshop is uh, or working digitally is with all these tools there's like there's no right or wrong way of doing something. Uh, there's there's multiple ways of getting the same result. Uh, so a lot of times like it, it it may be more efficient and quicker to do the lasso tool and just select what you want. I do that, but sometimes I just want to kind of color like I'm, you know, with a crayon almost or a marker. Um, there you go, this poor little guy. Right. There we go. So, like, pirate, uh, plaid's a pirate. He's got a little, like, a little um, coat that's been ripped up and some, some trousers for his costume, um, which we can't really see too much here because of the, he's all wrapped up at the moment. <laughs> Get just enough. Oops. I guess I paint that too. But yeah, uh, I was very, very uh, uh, excited and very thankful that uh, Jessica let me uh, do this during the lunch hour. Um, I hope uh, folks that are watching have enjoyed the minicon. I'm glad it's happening uh, after <laughs> after after this year. It's been kind of crazy, so um, I know a lot of different conventions around the country have gone digital, um, which uh, you know I guess is the next best thing of actually being there. Um, kind of uncharted territory for some. Um, I'm, I'm sure, um, especially like for cosplayers and people like that. Um, I don't know. I, I've always enjoyed conventions like this. Um, I love the camaraderie and uh, everybody coming together with you know shared interests and really just being an area where people can just you know 
feel free to, you know, be themselves and kind of, for some people, uh, a, lot, a lot of them like me coming out of their shells, you know, just being able to, you know, hang out with people that like the same thing, maybe discovering something new. Um, so one of the, one of my uh, design uh, issues with with um, stripes here was trying to figure out how to incorporate her um, how to do her stripes differently and I don't know why but I, I, I can't <laughs> my solution was this weird like almost David Bowie um, face stripe um, I think it's just odd enough that it works um, cuz it's like you know how many how many times how many how, how many different ways can somebody draw a tiger probably an infinite but i don't have that kind of time <laughs> uh, So you can see here, this was uh, an older um, version of stripes. Uh, her, her like, I guess fur is a little puffier, um, but uh, I kind of just gradually started drawing her with this more angular um, shape to her face and uh, to go along with that, with that uh, triangle stripe. And I think it, I think it looks cool. Um, um, it kind of, uh, juxtaposition uh, <laughs> there's some good juxtaposition between her and um like the roundness of stripes i mean sorry roundness of plaid uh because he's such a a tiny little round guy and yeah so one of the so when you get down you start like zooming in like this you can see how not all the time like the the ink work will not be a hundred percent darker than the um the color so they'll show through a little bit but when you zoom out it's it can't tell um, that's one that's one of the things that i always have trouble with is um i'll always zoom in and i'll think everybody you know it, it's gonna look bad what is this property still like uh, it'll look bad because everybody can tell um, and nobody can tell, nobody can see because the way you view digital art, it's very, very tiny uh, in terms of uh, screen um, resolution. There we go. And there she is. Um, that looks a little weird. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch to a white, and I'm gonna take my tool here, my lasso tool, and uh, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of white there to give her some teeth. Um, she looked kind of silly without it, and then I'll just. A quick little line there. Much better. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Stripes has got a little handkerchief. Um, so Stripes actually comes from. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome to uh, Ethan's corner where he tells uh, people too much about himself. Uh, which, yeah, sorry, I don't remember which uh, thing that was. Uh, so Stripes comes from, when I was a kid, my uh, sister uh, uh, got married, and um, the day, like, before the wedding or whatever, um, my dad took me to 
this really cool uh, like safari zone thing, um, which turned out had uh, I I got a little tiger um, because my sister went to LSU and I liked LSU and it was like you know this big thing. So I named the little tiger stripes and that's where stripes came from. Um, so to play off the stripes pun, um, I named plaid plaid because uh, you know a tiger and a mouse in my head back in middle school you know they wouldn't be friends so that's why i named plaid plaid um so to play off of uh stripes's name a little bit more a lot of her uh her handkerchief and her bandana i guess um and her dress uh have stripes on them uh I, I like I like character design. I like trying to, trying to come up with fun, interesting characters. Um, Kabu Cove is is fun because especially uh, in the some of the comics I've done so far, because there's lots of pirates in there, and pirates are just fun to draw because it's pretty much anything goes. Because um, they're you know they're ridiculous. They can be for like a you know a cute little. I uh, think so. What I'll do now, actually, add in stripes and stripes. Uh, I try to be a little uh, consistent with my character designs, but for whatever reason, whenever I draw stripes. There's never a set number of, <laughs> of, of triangles on there. I just kind of do what looks good. Um, and if I don't like it, I'll just change it. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> um, where am I? There we go. See, yeah, she's got a green shirt. Kapu Cove is a very, uh, it's, it, it takes place in like a, like a, uh, on, on a tropical island, um, like, um, Hawaii, uh, almost. Um, so the comic is just very, very saturated with colors. It's very vibrant. Um, I've, I've I've been toying with the idea of maybe turning the the color palette, the the vibrancy down a little bit, uh, maybe uh, going towards more of a muted pastel look. But um, I don't know. I just kind of like the the brightness of the comic. Um, all right, let's do her. Skirt. Um. Oh, that's exactly what I meant to do, but that's okay. Uh, another thing that is, is kind of like one of those one of those art tips that no one no one really likes to hear. Um, besides, like you know, practice, is uh, it really it, it's really beneficial to draw from life um, and have references, um, uh, especially in art school. Um, you'll you'll draw a lot of uh, still life. Uh, you know, uh, they'll, the instructors will, you know, typically put like, you know, some cloth 
up there on a pedestal with some plants and vases and all that kind of random stuff uh, that really wouldn't go together. Um, and, and, and you draw it and you paint it and you look and see how, you know, the cloth interacts with the, how the shading interacts with the lighting. Um, and uh, it's, it's just one of those things that it's a skill that you develop over time. Um, There's a lot of times um, that I'll have to I'll have to look up stuff. Like um, one of the last Kapu coves I did had this elephant in it, um, and uh, from from the angle uh, of the panel, um, uh, I, you could see the elephant's feet. Um, and and uh, I I was like I know. Sometimes you think you know what a thing looks like. I was like, yeah, I know what an elephant's foot look, looks like. And then I went and looked it up on, for real, and it was nothing like what I drew. <laughs> um, that happens a lot. A lot of times, a lot of times you don't know how uh, to draw things. Like, um, I, since the, the, the comic starts out and they're, they're kind of like pirates, um, I wanted to get the feel look to look right. Um, I did a lot of research on um, on just ships, like tall ships, and I had to learn how to draw like uh, the the rigging and the the everything for the sails, um, which was fun. Um, it was very time consuming and tedious, but it it you know it turned out okay. Um, so this foot <laughs> I don't like where her little toe beams are so we're gonna I'm gonna select the toe beams on the layer that she's on and we're just gonna move them up that didn't work there we go I have to find the right layer this is why you do your layers correctly There we go. Oh, I know what the problem is. Yeah, Photoshop definitely has a learning curve sometimes. Um, and like anything, you know, it takes practice to figure out. Um, so like the issue I just had there was, um, I had basically had the wrong layers so selected. Um, it, working digitally has its own own sets of problems. Um, uh, one of the, I think the one of the presenters that uh, was just uh, presenting earlier, um, he was talking about being self-taught in Photoshop, um, and uh, I, uh, along with uh, quite a lot of my friends uh, who are also artists, are also self-taught um, when it comes to, uh, there we go, uh, Photoshop. Um, it, it's, it's a very daunting uh, program to get into. Um, But there are some basics that you can that you can learn, and they'll serve you well. Um, and any of those other programs like Clip Studio and Procreate, they have their own you know little learning curves um, to figure out. Um, but generally, they're all kind of the same idea. Um, it, it can be tricky to go from one program to another program. If you're very familiar with one, um, that's one of my um, uh, trepidations about going uh, from Clip Studio to Photoshop is just because I know Photoshop so well. Um, so a lot of the, a lot of the, my muscle memory for selecting different tools and things would be completely different um, with a new program. And that can be one of those factors of like, 
you know you should probably try to something out, but you just kind of don't want to because, you know, you like it this way and that's fine. Um, the trying out new stuff uh, definitely has a benefit. Um, I know Clip Studio has this really cool perspective tool because um, it is primarily used for people who do uh, like sequential art and manga. Um, and as someone who uh, hates drawing perspective, <laughs> uh, having a tool that can help you do that, especially if you have like a comic where you're you're going to be in like a like a room for a long time. Uh, it's so super helpful. Um, so let's finish up stripes here real quick, um, and then I will get to this giant octopus monster. Let's see how far we can get. I'm, I hope this is all coming through okay. I haven't actually ever done this on Zoom before. So hopefully there's not too much of a delay from me drawing and what's actually showing up. Yeah. And then this little uh, ribbon on her tail, I use it uh, for the rest of her. Uh, it's like part of her bandana um, up here. Just to kind of throw that back into the mix. And forgetting how that works. There we go. That's not it at all. Perfect. Okay. Oh, I forgot her hand and this creepy, this creepy treasure, which I'm not quite sure what I'm going to color yet. Um, but since I do know I'm going to color it, I can just get messy and. So let's do this real quick so she'll be finished. There we go. Um, let's see, what would be a cool color? Um, let me look at my swatches here and see what I got. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, I will make this a little darker and I'm gonna use, uh, I've got a bunch of different, um, different kinds of uh, different interesting uh, brushes that some of them look like watercolor, some of them look like chalk. Um, I'm looking for something that's kind of messy. I want to try to make some text, put some texture in this thing maybe. Ooh, that's not showing up at all. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes you just kind of have to work with the program sometimes. Um, Especially doing like live drawings like this, uh, I've I've streamed. A, I used to stream uh, once in a while, and 
it can get it can get a little uh, wacky once you're trying to. I always I always worry about the people watching when I have to try to figure out like what what's wrong why is this why is this broken um, let me go through all these menus meanwhile people are watching like what is this guy doing I don't understand um, so I'm gonna add a, a lighter color uh, to this guy um, this that is not light enough. There we go. Just to give it a little texture. And I'm gonna take a, so green is, green's complementary color is red. So I'm going to make a spooky red gem color in here. Um, that is not the right color I want. No, come back. I did it too much. There we go. Pick a highlighter color. Okay. Oh, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of times it's just kind of trial and error, uh, seeing seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, uh, in the long run, you know, it'll look it'll look okay in the long run, hopefully. And that's generally my outlook is. Uh, will this be okay? <laughs> yeah, so we got a cool little gem going. Yeah, clean up these lines a little bit. And I'm going to do this and turn my opacity down. Uh, just to give it like a little, little shine. Perfect. Um, all right. Let me start on this guy. First thing I gotta do is select this big old noggin. Um, so it's, uh, it's 120, I don't know. Uh, I think the lunch break might be over in a little while. Um, but if you've been watching me, uh, I hope uh, it's been uh, a little entertaining and my ranting was helpful in some way. If you're, <clears throat> if you're looking to be a, you know, do comics, do any kind of drawing, um, just, just go for it. Just, just you know, dive in head first. Um, it, it's, it's something that is, is really, really difficult to start, um, but super rewarding once you do. Um, whether or not you want to do, do this, you know, for a living or just as a hobby or something in between, um, you know, there's, there's plenty of ways of doing it. Um, and no, there is no one r right way. Um, That's, so we'll make this uh, scary guy purple. Yeah, perfect. Big purple octopus. Um. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll try to throw this up somewhere. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll definitely put this up on my, uh, my website. Um, it's uh, Kapu Cove, uh, K-A-P-U, 
C-O-V-E.com. And um, I'll get this drawing finished and throw up there. Um, <laughs> This is a little tricky here. I really should have done the background, the octopus first, but I wanted to paint the characters first. So, oh well. Almost, well, I'm not sure about that part, but <laughs> there we go. Perfect, this guy. So I kind of want to I want to add some different textures and things to this guy. So I'm going to uh, use a, I bet, um, I'm sure I have a good brush for splatters. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Uh, maybe too much. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, so, um, You select. There we go, perfect. So now I can add some, don't want them quite so dark. There we go, put some texture on this guy. Um, make him, you know, give him some visual interest. Um, You know, this is another one of those examples of like the having having different brushes that can do different things really can save you time because um, like filling all these little doing all these little um, splashes would take forever. It would be fun, but it would take a long time. So now that that's done, I'm going to um, I'm going to choose a little lighter color. For some more splotches. Um, maybe oh, that's on multiply. Hmm. There we go. Not light enough. That's a fun thing about color sometimes is you think it might be. There we go. That's what I want. It'd be a lot lighter than it actually is. Um, my friends need to stop sending me messages on Facebook because I'm streaming to all the awesome people that are watching the microcon right now. <laughs> uh, and with that, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to give them some stripes. That looks amazing, Ethan. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I don't actually know if anything is coming through, so I'm glad. <laughs> it, it is coming through, and this is this has been super great. This is Adam, by the way. Hey, um, Adam. How's hey, it going? Good. Um, but yeah, this has been an excellent uh, lunch hour. Uh, great, great. Well, time. I, I'm really appreciative uh, that you let me do this. Uh, yeah, this awesome. we've loved having you, man.